Um, so those works do not actually require this building consent. Um, so the Victorian Society would not a statutory objection, uh, a statutory possibility in terms of these proposals. Uh, however, we, we are aware of the comments that the Victorian Society has raised, uh, but as I highlighted in my presentation, a request was made for us to uh, hold the Yes, thank you very much, Chair. Um, as someone who also went on the site visit, I must say I have to concur with my councillor colleagues who are telling a summation of the situation in that I do believe that the new building that is proposed to take the place of the building with the sort of rather blank wall facing onto the main road there is a far superior building to what is in existence. It's no higher. It has far more apparent appearance values than the one that's there at the moment. So I don't think that would be a problem. My concern, as others have had, is the effect of parking on the area. And I don't see that we could move, that this particular development is deemed to be attempting to increase the numbers of people attending the church. It's merely meaning to rationalize and reorganize the uh, facilities and the services that are already currently available within the church and make those more modern and more meaningful. So on those grounds, I don't think we could use the existing problems with parking as they definitely exist. I know I passed up to that road regularly on regular occasions. And there has been parking problems there for a long time. But we can't, unfortunately, tie refusal of this particular proposal to an existing parking problem because that would be very likely to be turned over at appeal on the grounds that there's no sufficient exacerbation increase parking problem to justify such a refusal. I think the other thing that we need to note is that the objector made great play of the fact he thought that something better could have been designed for this particular area and he's concerned that there should be an opportunity to even change the design into something more meaningful. I have to say that while that is a valid consideration to a lay person, unfortunately we are required by law to consider the application that we have before us and either prove it or refuse it on planning grounds, on any other grounds, on planning grounds. So I'm afraid we can't use the idea that maybe a better design could have been produced than the one that we are looking at is a reason or a ground for turning it down. And finally, home, the actual um, home lead, the house that we looked at, having I have to declare an interest here that I've been involved in the construction industry for 40 years and I've, I have been personally responsible for refurbishing a lot of listed buildings and heritage buildings all over the country. And whilst this is a very nice little building, it is not of anything outstanding in quality that would, resonate, that would mean that it could be used as a sustainable reason for refusing the remainder of this development. In my view, it is just a casualty of the fact there are a lot of other buildings of a similar nature on the world that are more worthy of keeping than this one, which admittedly has been allowed to get into a bit of a stake. But I do not believe that the demolition of that building or the retention of that building should be used in any way as a reason for not allowing this development to proceed. So in line with, as I've said, my colleague, uh, Councillor Kelly, um, I'm minded to support this application on the ground that does provide far better services for the local people. I'm also pleased to hear that traffic officers are going to try and do something about the junctions of the road to the north of this particular site, which we have seen both demonstrated in photographs and which I'm already aware of, do have major problems where people insist on parking against the law too close to the actual junctions. So the contribution eventually of some double yellow lines that will certainly improve the situation and that's what I would be looking for the traffic officers to do if possible. So, very quickly, I'm in favour of this development. I think it's a nice development. It's obviously had a lot of consideration put into it. There is concern over the parking issues, but apart from that, I think it's an excellent solution to a problem that needed addressing. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Jason. My final point is just one clarification that follows on from my previous observations. Is it the officer's opinion? Will this development significantly exacerbate? Thank you, Chair. Uh, the, the 
the buildings on site are currently being used for the purpose that this, this new building is proposed for. So our view is that there won't be a significant increase in traffic in the area as a result of this new building. Yeah, I just want to really approval for the Thank you, Chair. Permission 
to install the change of use of this unit to an SP1 D2 use, which would incorporate a ground floor office and a cross of a leisure use. The National Planning Policy Framework promotes mixed use developments. It also advises that policy should avoid long term protection of sites for employment use where no reasonable prospect of such uses seems likely. The applicant has considered alternative sites, but these have not proved suitable. There are also benefits for locating all elements of the business together under one roof, minimising the need to travel between sites. The proposal is recommended for approval for 10 years, after which a further application would be required to continue the mixed use, or the unit would revert back to its B2 use. There have been no representations received on this application. Is there more counsel that I can
the report goes on to say it, that the proposal does not retain style and cap, does retain style and capture the original dwelling house, but does not reflect wholly the style and capture of the nearby long established properties, which form part of that conservation. It seems irreconcilable that you can, on the one hand, say the character of the conservation area is unaffected by its development, and on the other, say it doesn't reflect it. Um, there are other concerns my client has the, the relationship with the property to his and the openings and doors and its effect on boundaries. Um, my, it should be noted that the objection is supported by the North Rock Conservation Act. It should also be noted that there has been a petition, 33 residents from the conservation area and around have uh, signed that petition, including all eight that surround the property. My, my client would strongly ask that the council, the committee, uh, is urged to refuse the application. Thank you. Thank you. Would the applicants or agents like to speak? Just press it once.
you know, we planted those trees with all due respect, if we want to take those trees down, we will. We planted them because we do want privacy. Um, our the back boundary to our house is um, has that land right all around back, all around the side as well. So privacy is obviously very important to us. We certainly wouldn't expect to build an extension whereby you know we would be <coughs> overlooking them or my clients. Um, you know, we're just telling you for 45 seconds. Of course, <laughs> we're lucky enough to live in a conservation area. We love where we live. We would never be doing this as a detriment of that because you know it's a nice place to live, and obviously we wouldn't want to be making it a not nice place to live. Not that it is. So. I, I've just actually been corrected there that you do have another minute. Is there anything else you want to say? I can talk for hours and literally I would sit there going on for hours. But all I can say is, you know, we, we are genuinely doing this for what happens to my grandparents. It's in their best interest and in ours as well. Um, we certainly don't want to upset any of the neighbours. With regards to these 33 residents, I suspect that maybe the petition has gone round very close at the back of our house, which I have to say, um, you know, the fact that Mrs. Thomas lives there with Jeremy and his daughter, whether that's, you know, has had any impact on that whatsoever, I don't know, but I would suggest that it is a conflict of interest. Um, but I have to say, we're, you know, we're, we're doing it to look after my man and grandson, we've got all time, and, you know, life is difficult, unfortunately, but that's the case for everyone, isn't it? So we're just hoping to do what we can to help. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Is there a call of Lord Councillor who would like to speak? No. Okay. Okay, can I just go to the members of the committee, please? Thank you. 
and final point is relative to the conservation area. So having put those as six items, terracing, roof line, front setback, footprint, separate access and conservation area, I'd just like some brief <coughs> comments on those, particularly the first four items, I would like to know whether the officers believe, as I do actually, that it does in fact comply with our current policy.